Okay, so I'm going to go into the Erlang shell. Now we're going to look at how strings are represented as numbers in Erlang. And it doesn't make a difference if it's the actual string or the set of numbers. So the first thing I want to do is an assignment of hello world dot, and that's now assigned. So I've got the interpretation of this for strings, and I'm just going to do a list and add my period now. So what I want is a 104, a 101, 108, 108. Then I have 111 and 32, 119, 111, 114, 108, 100. Hit enter. Notice it's exactly the same thing as hello world. Now, there's another representation that we can do as well that looks like this. So it's another list. And I'll have a dollar sign H. I'll have a dollar sign E and then a dollar sign L, dollar sign L. Then it's going to be an O, dollar sign O. Then a dollar sign space, dollar sign W, dollar sign O. And we have a dollar sign R, then an L, then a D. So R, L, D. And it looks like I've messed this up down here. And so hopefully if all of these are correct, we should get the same output, and we do. So this last one that we did here is a Unicode assignment. But you can see there are uh, two binaries here, and then we have a regular string. They're all equivalent. So it makes processing in Erlang really fast. All right, so let's move on to some comparisons. If I have 13, I want to compare it to 2. So is 13 greater than 2? And I'll, of course, end with my period. Yes, 13 is greater than 2. Is 18.2 greater than or equal to 19? No, it is not. And so for a few other kinds of comparisons, what about is 3 equal to 3? Yes. So that is an equivalent comparison. Then we have something like, is 4 e not equal to 4? Of course, that's false. What about 4 not equal to 5? That should be true, and it is. So those are some of the comparisons and, and what you can use when you're trying to compare different items inside of Erlang. Now let's look at atoms. All right, so I have ABC. I've just created an atom. And I can assign, or I can compare ABC to DEF. That's going to give us a false. What about ABC compared to ABC? That of, a, that of course, is true. So that's a look at how atoms work inside of Erlang. They're kind of like um, a primitive in a way, but a little bit different. They're their own kind of thing. So let's look at tuples now. And earlier I explained tuples are basically where you can get multiple values returned from a function or from some execution, and you can take each value and assign into a variable. And th those variables are called tuples. So here's how it'll work. I'm going to have some atoms in this tuple. So there's going to be three of them here. I'll have DF, GHI, period. I want the period out here. All right, so there we go. We just created tuple, a set of tuples. Here's one that might be a little bit more real world. So I have email, and then I'm going to add a string. And this is going to be something like example at example.org. Now, this first tuple is three atoms. One atom is ABC, the second DEF, and we end with GHI. They're not strings, they're atoms. Here we have an atom, and then we have a string. So I'm going to go ahead and create that tuple. Now we can work with these a little bit. So I'm going to call element, and I'm going to call three, element three. And I want it to return element three out of this tuple here and I'm going to give this 
four values. And then I'll have M and O. So what I want it to do is go in here, basically get this GHI and assign to M and O. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Okay, actually, looks like I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because this right here, this is just gonna extract the element. I'm trying to also assign it, which element won't do. So let me up arrow and remove this part. Then we'll be able to extract this one here, GHI, I believe, and we do. All right, so now we can go ahead and assign into MNO, not using element, but using set element. So I'm going to do set element here and hit enter. And now what we've done is take in MNO and put it in place of element three. So GHI is gone, replaced by MNO. So that is working with tuples. And another thing we can do, so I'm gonna create another set of two tuples and compare them to these tuples. DEF, hit enter, actually left my period off. So there we go, that's true. Now if we take the same kind of thing, compare it to A, B, C, M, N, O, period, false. So that is a little bit of working with tuples and also how to do some comparisons, how to get elements out of the tuples. Then we looked at these strings up here and how the binary equivalents of these in Unicode. So we can see that all three are basically the same thing. You get hello world for all three of these. Next, we're going to start working with the local file system through the shell. We're going to create small programs inside of a file, compile them, and run them inside of the shell.